Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Got loads of stuff this week, including big news from SRAM and Zwift, as well as carbon fiber disc brakes. What? Laser beams that are being used to help make bike parts and loads of other cool stuff. We're also going to be discussing if sportive bikes are no longer a thing, because these days people are taking sportives very seriously, treat them like races, and, um, well, bike brands keep inventing loads of other types of bikes. Fantastic. Should we go to it? Yeah. All right. So this week we are discussing if sportives and grand fondos, you know, that kind of thing, uh, becoming increasingly difficult and that people are approaching them a bit like a race. And you shouldn't be lulled into a false sense of security thinking that they're going to be a walk in the park because I think you're going to get quite a shock. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like, like sportives, I mean, grand fondos, uh, uh, been very always been very serious like they're very difficult mm. um, events so they've always attracted like a higher level yeah races are races but sportives it felt like they they used to be kind of like more mass participation that's true yeah turn up have a go and it would it would be more of like a sort of more akin to say the london marathon yeah in that you have like all like a, a big range of ability there and there's a much more sort of yeah you can sort of give it a go and, and I feel like the yeah get the, round yeah the challenge element is completing it the challenge yes. element isn't like kicking everyone's head in on the bike ride and beating them by miles yeah <laughs> and what you'd never want to happen is for these mass participation events to be perceived from newcomers and beginners as being too serious yeah that's definitely you don't want that to the point where there's like a barrier to, to entry yeah. people go like oh my bike's not good enough for that or i'm not good enough for that or my you know equipment isn't good enough for that and and therefore be put off from coming into the sport which is like we want to cater for everyone. We want everyone to come yeah. involved. We always want new people to discover cycling. That's true. I think it's maybe like an evolution of the event as well as then the equipment that goes with it. Mm. So I think if you were, say, if you're getting into cycling and you've got to the point of like, okay, I want to start to take it a little bit more seriously, what's like the next step instead of just going for a ride at the weekend? Well, you do like a sportive. Yes. And then to go with that, you'd perhaps maybe have a bike that's suitable for riding that kind of distance. And then gradually it's evolved that instead of perhaps people taking it more seriously again and then moving to racing, they've gone, well, I'll just keep doing this cool sportive event, but it's now turning into more of a race. And then yeah. the equipment's getting more and more. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of riders out there who do pretty well in sportives and, and those kinds of events who kind of should probably go and do a race. Yeah, you probably should. Because they'd be pretty good. Yeah. Like, rather than just tearing up a load of people who aren't actually racing against you in a sport team. To be fair, that's probably what I would do if I did a sport team. Yeah, that's what I would do as well. Yeah, I would race it. My <laughs> friends do that. Um, but it is a good point. You don't want to make it seem like sp a sportive is a race because the idea and the principle behind it is that it's about the challenge of doing the event and enjoying it, not going there to feel like you're getting sort of half pushed out by people that should probably just go into a bike race. Mm. Mm. So if the concept of a sportive has evolved ever so slightly into something a little bit more like a race, yeah. I suppose in line with that, you could say the concept of a sportive bike has also evolved. And, but I don't think it's evolved hugely. I think a sportive bike traditionally would have been, say, go back 10 years, aluminium. It was, it's the Giant Defy. It would have been a do-it-all That mid, was like the biggest selling bike, the Giant yeah. Defy. You know, okay. it, it, it's it's slightly longer wheelbase, more relaxed geometry, shorter top tube, only slightly. Probably and aluminium higher as well. Front. Aluminium. I yeah. think that would have been like a fairly like set parameter to define a sportive bike. Move forward to like 2023, sportive bike, I don't really feel like it actually exists anymore. You've got brands basically are now just calling everything an endurance bike. I mm. think what was a sportive bike has now evolved to be a little bit more racy, and is now called an endurance bike. Yeah, that's, that's my sort of take on it. Well, I've I've done some a quick bit of research, of course, and I looked at what were the biggest selling bikes in 2022. Do you have any idea? I've have got guess? absolutely no idea. I'm sure you're going to tell us. Well, the top two <laughs> are what we would consider historically to actually be sportive bikes. So it shows that that's where a large proportion of the yeah. market is, and a large proportion, presumably, of the viewers, they're the kind of bikes that people want to buy. Yeah. So, uh, Trek de Marne, specialised Roubaix. Which was number one? Uh, the Roubaix. Wow. Yeah. Now, that, apparently that it's like very a... close though, but number three, yeah. 
tarmac. Specialised tarmac. Which is not, which is like a race bike. Yeah. Really? Well, that's the bike, yeah, that the, the do Remco all. rides yeah. on. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. That's something in line with, um, oh, a while back we had Jake come in on the tech show. He was saying that a lot of the people he sees to do bike fits are maybe people that are perhaps doing sportive or mass participation events. And he says sometimes people are turning up with like a race bike and he's really like, that's it's not really the ideal bike for you. Well, yes, but then... <laughs> but then I was thinking about this, and, and we touched on it before, because when I was at the London Bike Show, we um, saw this bike that had been you know, created by uh, Pearson Cycles, because they, they were conscious of this, and they relaxed the geometry um, mm-hmm. on their latest bike to make it more suitable for what they considered to be the normal cyclist. <laughs> yeah. Because most of us um, aren't, aren't pros, and, and the bikes like the Specialized Tarmac are race machines designed yeah. for the flexibility and mobility of the, of, of the best pros who, who do 20-hour weeks, week yeah. in, week out, on the bike. Which is definitely not me. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> not me. But then they, um, you know, so you, what you see is, yeah, people running their bikes with loads of spaces. And so yeah. historically, the sportive bike was higher at the front end yeah. and more suited in the geometry. But the way I see it is everyone knows that there's these bikes available that are more aero. Yeah. Right? So you get well, your aero bike. And a lot yeah. of the time, people... Like, your big event is going to be hard. You don't want to make it any harder. And we know that aero bikes are faster and are going to make you a bit faster overall. I mean, we tell everybody all the time. Because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's true. Yeah. But then what happens is, is then people... So people want aero. Yeah. And also the aero bike looks cool. It does look Compared cool, to yeah. maybe the... The sort of sporty bike, maybe doesn't it just doesn't look as cool, does it? Yeah. So you've got this thing where people want the cooler bike that's also the faster bike, and so there isn't really, as far as I can tell, many bikes available. It's not certainly none from the, the sort of major brands that are like an aero bike. Yeah. It's got like more relaxed. Geometry. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Because I mean, even even <laughs> if you like people people in the comments where you go, oh well, Trek had their like H two yeah I geometry that. right, where it was like less on the lower end models, it was more relaxed. But even that isn't like super relaxed, is it? I mean, so, it's not like a specialized diverge, you know. So what we're saying is, the sporty bike as it used to be known, maybe perhaps doesn't exist. It's been replaced with something like an endurance bike, but we're now saying that bike brands make loads of different types of bikes, but perhaps they need to make another one. Like yes. an aero sportive bike. <laughs> well, if you look at what the biggest selling bikes are, it, it suggests that that maybe. Well, that wasn't the outcome I was expecting from this. Uh, but yeah, it's a good. You do raise a good point. Um, and really, I think what doesn't help is the fact of how accessible all of the top level equipment is. Um, it, it, I guess it all boils down to the age old question of like. Do you need to have the really fancy, expensive, race oriented stuff that's going to make you go fast? No, but is it nice to have? Yes, it is. <laughs> I think as people like develop more in, in, the, in the sport, it's, you know, people want to buy these things and they can buy these things, and that's great. Mm. I think, yeah, like on the one hand, you know, we were speaking before about like the barriers to entry and putting people off getting into cycling. Yeah. Like, I think, I think you can sort of have have it both because I mean look if you look at the London Marathon you've got Mo Farah running away and yeah. Kipchoge and those guys and that doesn't put people off no. you know but maybe just make sure there is that sort of segregation or just just don't take don't be so mindful of being like oh I'm going to do a sporty but everyone's got like lo- loads of fancy stuff just like whatever I'm here to enjoy it mm. like going for the bike ride is the most important part and do you know what if you are ever so slightly slower than everyone else well you've just enjoyed it for longer that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you had a great time, and if you ride riding somewhere longer. beautiful, yeah. that is like. I mean, that's what I, when when that, we rode the cheap um, used Pinarello, yeah, um, and we rode it up the Stelvio. That was the thing that occurred to me. There, it was such a beautiful day with snow everywhere and blue sky. I was like, I actually get to enjoy this for longer. Well, if you'd have been if you'd been racing up there, you wouldn't have noticed any of that. No, I would have just been staring at my stem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, have sportive bikes died a death? Well. In the, in the sort of crux and how they used to be, maybe they have, but I think they've really just evolved and morphed more than died a death. Yeah, but I think there's, I think the space for them to evolve further. <laughs> the, space, the space for a new type of bike. Yeah, I want an aero sportive bike. Um, well, let us know in the comments section down below if you think an aero sportive bike is a good idea, or if perhaps, you know what, you're just happy with an aluminium sportive bike. But also, it's got to be comfortable. 
and it's got to be lightweight, and it's got it's got, <laughs> it's, got it's got to be reasonably priced. Lightweight, aluminium or carbon? Carbon. Yeah, of course. Mm. Electronic gears, probably. Yeah. All right. But all for under two grand. I feel like that gap in the market is going to exist. It's a gap. That is a gap in the market. It's going to be there for quite some time at that <laughs> price point. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section down below. And um, well, we'll move on to hot tech next, shall we? Mm. Mm. Time now for hot tech, and it's a big one because we have got no one. But two new group sets. Yes, Ollie, yes, we do. Um, SRAM have just launched new Apex, which is seen as their, I guess, entry level or group set of the people, you could call it. I do find it interesting because Apex means the top. Does that? It? It's like Apex Predator. I had literally no idea about that. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about the group sets. So you've got two group set options here. You've got an, a mechanical one and an electronic version. Headline stats for you for the new Apex group sets. One by 12 speed. It's now the first um, 12 speed mechanical group set SRAM have launched, which is kind of a big deal. And it's the first mechanical group set SRAM have launched for like five years. So there's quite a lot of tech and stuff going on here. Um, it's using the Access ecosystem if you're using the electronic shift in. So the lever body is the same shape and sizes as like the, the other Access ones, so Force and Rival. The mechanical lever body, ever so slightly bigger than the Axis version, but like a slimmed down mechanical one. Yeah, which is and good. it's smaller than mechanical force, the old mechanical force yes. lever. It used to be really tall, if you remember those. Um, so yeah, one by 12 speed hydraulic disc brake group set. And when it comes to the gearing, so it's aimed at, it's, it's aimed at a gravel group set, basically. And you've got two different options when you start breaking down the gearing that you have at the back. So as well as going mechanical or electronic, within those two options, you've got two more options. So do you go down the Explore route, which is um, a slightly smaller, closer ratio cassette and a smaller derailleur, pairs up with that, can go up to a 44 tooth. Or, That's still big, isn't it? Which is a big range of gearing. Yeah. It was good enough for Roglic to ride that climb the Giro. Yeah. Um, or you go down the Eagle route, which is using a sort of mountain bike type and style derailleur. And mm. then you can get those whopping great big 52 tooth cassettes Full on there. mullet. Yeah. Um, compatible with a flat top chain. You've got clutch in the rear derailleur. And there's also, this is super cool actually, power meter option available. Left hand um, crank spindle based unit. And it's only 200 pounds. For the, for the so for the power meter. meter upgrade, two hundred pounds. Yeah, which is kind of nuts. And that'll be a quark as well, presumably. Yeah. So do you want um, to know some prices for this I stuff? I do. I do. I'm glad you asked because I've got it right here in front of me. Price wise, if you go down the Apex Access group set and you use the Explore version, you're looking at a price of one thousand two hundred sixty-two pounds. If you go Access Eagle group set, one thousand three hundred three pounds. Now, if you fancy the Apex Mechanical group set and you want the Explore version, you've got £1,060. And if you have Mechanical Eagle, £1,035. Okay, so just to be clear for people who are unfamiliar, but yeah. SRAM um, Apex is the third tier. It sits below um, Force and then Red, which is the top, yeah. right? So this is, this is in line with 105, it except is. that as a list price... Is yes. significantly less than 105 Di2, so 13, well, 12, 27 pounds. 12, 27, yeah. So the list price of 105 Di2, 1730. Yeah. But I had a quick look on on uh, some online retailers, and it's going for around 1350 okay. in the UK. So you can, I mean, price is gradually so maybe, tumble. Well, if this it then sells at a lower price, <clears throat> well, maybe. So in terms, maybe in Stram ter Apex. Yeah. Could be the new group set of people. It could be actually. It could be. I like that. In terms of bike price points, um, for the electronic shift in SRAM we're anticipating around the two thousand two hundred dollar marker for for a for complete bike, which is good. Um, more hot tech news. Um, Zwift Play has launched. Yeah, this is a big deal yes. for Zwift, right? I've got, I've got it down here. Oh, there you go. Check this. <clears throat> oh, wrong way around. So. Hang on, what are we doing? Yeah, so this is this is the right and left. <coughs> Where are we go? It's got left and right written on it for I you. I know, I'm... There we go. There we go. So this is the right and left uh, Zwift plate. And this is big because by attaching these onto the drops of your handlebars, 
you will now be able to steer and brake in game. Yeah, so the idea behind Zwift Plate is really to bring the interactive side of Zwift to you, to the handlebars, because in its current sort of state, to be interactive with Zwift, you've got to let go of the handlebars and you've got to use your laptop or the device that you're using. And from some of the research that Zwift have done, there's only around 15% of users actually use like the power ups. But that's often not because they don't want to, it's because, because it's like the stuff. they may be Zwifting in a really nice pen cave with a yeah. massive TV on the wall yeah. and they can't. You just can't reach, can you? I still don't understand the people that are able to type when, when in a race <laughs> yeah, and send messages. I don't know how these people. That's a it. concept of Zwift. I am gonna they always are, be a mystery to me. I'm just like hanging, yeah. just like sweating. I'm a mess. Yeah, can barely breathe, and they're just writing beautiful prose. Yeah. Don't so understand. in terms of the physical hardware stuff, we'll go into some more details on that in a minute, and we'll actually get these bad boys onto a bike and set up so we can use the stuff and show you what it's like. But the key thing is that you will be able to gain an advantage yes. in in a race situation by steering to better get in the draft and also by negotiating corners faster by braking and then accelerating out of them as opposed to just letting the normal just algorithm do it and just glide you through. So you're no longer going to be able to descend out the Zwift at 70 kilometres an hour around all the corners, presumably, no. without braking and, and doing that sort of stuff. But if you don't have this, if you don't have the, the, the Zwift, play, the controls. Zwift play controls, you can still ride Zwift without You can without do all the them, stuff like normal. Which yeah. is important for me. I ask that question because sometimes, I, well, I, I like to do a Zwift race hmm. and where I would like this interactive element, but other times I just kind of want to just do a workout and not have to just think about along. the steering. Yeah, okay. You know, not have to think about braking and steering. I just want to... Yeah, that makes sense. Just focus on the workout, <clears throat> on so the as interval. I, as I said, we'll like focus on the hardware element a little bit more in a minute, but there's also some software updates. So the rider teleport is now going to be live. Yep, we which, mentioned that on a previous Which is GCN a cool show. thing. I'm buzzing for that. Do you reckon um, you could just use it to keep leapfrogging ahead? We well, said about Alpha Zwift earlier. Mm. Do you reckon you could teleport to the top and ride down and just keep doing that. And do like a 100 kilometer ride. <laughs> try and like beat the system. I'll try. I I'll don't know if that's can. possible. Yeah. Um, as well as that, um, there's some updates to the action bar, which is accessible in the bottom of your screen when you're sort of in the game Zwift, which has got loads of, di of additional features, which if you use something like Zwift Play, you're actually going to be able to utilize that stuff, which is pretty cool, eh? Mm. Um, right, see you in a second. So this is what the Zwift Play controllers look like when they're fitted onto your handlebars. And I've got to say, they really do integrate pretty seamlessly. And this is something Zwift have worked particularly hard on through a series of different clay models to get that shape just right. Not only that, they've thoroughly tested the units as well for their resistance to sweat and water. They've done this by constantly dripping sweat into the units to make sure that nothing could ever go wrong. Now I do wonder, whether this was actually sweat or just salty water, but you'd assume salty water. In terms of connectivity, these pair up using Bluetooth to the device that you're Zwifting on, and if your device isn't able to have any more connections added to it, then you can use the Zwift Companion app to act as a bridge to link those two together. They've got rechargeable batteries with around 20 hours of use, and they can be charged up simultaneously using the same cable, which has got a split end, so that you haven't got to have multiple cables going everywhere. Now, I really do like the look of how these integrate into the handlebars. I've jumped on Zwift and just had a little go getting used to the controls, and it is really intuitive, which is really nice to see. Loads of functionality to add in and bring more to the game of Zwift. In terms of the individual controls and the buttons, hopefully we'll bring something up on screen which can explain what each different button does because there's quite a lot of buttons to get through. And um, the price for Zwift Play controllers for a limited time only, £99, €99 Euros, and $99, Zwift is saying. Next up in Hot Tech, we've yeah. got some incredibly bling carbon tie disc brake rotors. Yes, we do, Ollie. Um, they're actually not super new, but what is new is that there's now a center lock version available. Oh, that's good. It used so to be six bolt only. Yeah, it used to be six bolt only, which is not really like a road bike standard as such. Um, don't get your hopes up too much just yet, because they haven't somehow engineered a center lock 
piece out of carbon fibre. They've now modified the carbon fibre centre carrier of this disc brake to integrate like really seamlessly with a six bolt to centre like adapter which they make. So the big thing yeah. that we need to know, what is the weight saving, <laughs> the weight saving. of these things over say a, a normal I don't know, Dura Ace rotor? Okay, so 160 mil carbon tie one, 98 grams. Right. Dura Ace, 160 um, mil, 121 grams. 121 grams. So quick maths, 121, take away 98, 23 grams. And what's the price difference? I'm good at maths. Um, the carbon tie ones are 220 euros each. Okay. And I don't actually have a Durace price to hand. Oh, I do actually. Here we go. Um, £60? £60. Yeah. So about a lot less. <laughs> I can't do any more maths. So pounds, pounds per gram. Ooh. Maybe not great. It's, it's a, I, I really like the look of these, but it's an odd concept to me, trying to really drastically reduce the weight and potentially functionality of brake components. Yeah. Um, um, I would agree with that as well. So, in, from a material science perspective, one of the advantages of carbon is that carbon fibre isn't great at conducting heat. Hmm. This is one of the reasons why, if you have a stuck carbon seat post, it's not a good idea to heat it up in the way that you would perhaps with a metal yeah. seat post, because yeah. it won't expand. <clears throat> um, but it's not great at conducting heat, and, and so part of the role of the carrier sort of area on a lot of disc yeah. brake designs is... Like like with the Shimano ones, they it's have like heat dissipation as well. They have cooling yeah. fins yeah. built into the rotor <clears throat> there yeah. to dissipate the heat. So I can't. It's I mean, an interesting concept, basically. My guess would be that wouldn't dissipate heat as well. Okay, that's a good but, guess. Um, they're obviously doing something right because UAE team are using them on their bikes, so they obviously feel confident in it. Sponsoring them or saving a bit of weight, maybe. Yeah, good. Um, next up in hot tech is something which I actually spotted on Instagram and I've just been showing Ollie how incredible it is. Take a look at it and prepare to be wowed. Basically, laser beams etching bike components. This is cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. So this is being done by Caps Guru, who we've spoken on the show about before because they do really cool, um, like custom engraved and custom designed uh, headset caps, yeah. as well as a load of other cool accessories uh, for your bike, loads of cool little things. So apparently these are being really deep laser etched so they can then be like mirror polished up. There's some GRX lever blades and some Dura-Ace calipers. If you are the somehow the magical person who's getting this done to put the stuff on your bike, once it's done, send a picture to me or Ollie. Will you? It'd be incredible. I'd it's good, isn't it? I like because it's like next level little customization yeah. details that you could do to the components on your bike. Hey, Matt, you really know, cool. like um, cars always have, have painted brake calipers. Maybe that should be a thing on on bikes. Mm -hmm. Like red brake calipers on the sporty one. Yeah, or yellow. <laughs> yeah, or yellow. Yeah. Or white. Uh, or white. If no, they no, were, you can't have no, white brake calipers. Yes, no. you can. If you've got tungsten carbide uh, pads and discs, because then it doesn't create brake dust like Porsche. Okay. It's the selling point. Uh, do you want those on your aero lightweight sportive bike? Yes. <laughs> but under um, two grand. Next, we've got some news about chain waxing, actually, and it's becoming more available to the masses. Is that right? Yeah, so this is a company called Cyclowax who sell waxed chains and also kits to do your own chain waxing um, at home. And this is cool because they've now actually partnered with a couple of uh, bike brands. Mm. So Jaeger and Sturdy Cycles. Oh, Tom. Yeah, our mate Tom. <laughs> um, are now going to be offering this uh, so that they can sell a bike at the point of purchase. It comes with a waxed chain. That's quite cool. So it takes this is, the hassle out. Yeah, it means you don't have to bother with you know stripping and cleaning the, you know, the factory packing grease off your chain before you wax it. It comes with your new bike, which I think is a great thing. And hopefully, this is a sign of things to come in the future. <laughs> yeah. All I right. Mean, it would be good, wouldn't it, if bikes just came with wax chains? It would be good. Um, we've gone on for a while on Hot Tech, so quick fire Hot Tech next for you. Last week you said Planet X were in trouble. They've now been saved. Somebody's Woo. bought them. Strava is now automatically flagging certain rides where it's clear that someone has just cheated or yes. there's an error. Um, Apple Watches can now pair up to power meters. That might be a thing. And also, check this stuff out. New t-shirt. 
new yellow bottle. Do you know what these are for? The big French bike ride, which is happening at the start of July. They're exactly for the big French Available bike ride. Available in shop.globalcyclingnetwork. <laughs> Time now for comments of the week. Play the man on jingle. Hit it. Some people say the presenters are hilarious. Others appreciate the cycling tips they share with us. The fans are diverse from all around the world and the GCN team loves to give them a shout out. So shout out to the... So shout out to the GCN team for their comments of the week, for bringing us together no matter how unique. We are the fans of cycling. We share all the passion. Right on, y'all. Let's make the cycling world our fashion. <laughs> um, from last week's show, uh, Tucson Behind Bars says, the most aesthetic thing about cycling for me is seeing people from all walks of life and age groups riding on the loop here in... Is it Tucson? Tucson. Oh, in Arizona. Say, yeah. Um, recumbent, elliptical bike, gravel bikes, cruisers, with the occasional pet in a basket. Mm. These are my people. I love each of them, every one of them. Wow. Okay. That's nice. That's super happy. Yeah. It's all inclusive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark C3050 says, the sound a perfectly tuned aero bike with deep section wheels makes when uh, flowing along at 45 kilometers an hour. It's a cool noise, to be fair. <laughs> Yeah. We should do a, um, what's it called? Is it like ASMR where they do like just the noises of deep aero wheels? That's what we should do. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Go to sleep listening to it. Relax you. <laughs> I do that every night. Yeah. Retro wheels uh, <laughs> yes. video that you did where we got spinnages against some modern wheels. Love it. Some comments on that. Did, have you, did I actually tell you um, the difference you killed in the some squirrels. No. Did I tell you the How difference? How many animals did you kill while riding spinnages? <laughs> Five. No, I'm kidding. Did I tell you the difference in the speeds? Across uh, my test loop. I can't remember if I told you or not. No. It was like four seconds difference. Basically not really different. It's kind of crazy. If you want to check it out, have a look at the video. Anyway, Bicyclist 2 says, love the look of these spinningy wheels. I remember when they came out. Everyone wanted a pair. They still look great even after all those years. I still want a pair very badly. Hoping to save enough money to buy a pair. I really don't care if newer modern wheels are a little bit more aero. Um... Spinaches come from the golden years of cycling. Mm. There was loads of great innovation back then. Mm. Uh, Matthew Bainham, 6286, says, I think GCN desperately needs to design and build their own wind tunnel. How difficult can it be to find a long room in GCN Megabase and install a massive fan system at one end? There must be a corridor that you can use. Unfortunately, there is a corridor, but we can't use it because John Bevan sits at the end of it yeah. and does all the, the racing Edits. Live racing action. Yeah, so we would have no live racing. Um, <laughs> he says the RAF are busy upgrading to the F F35. All you need is one Eurofighter engine at the end of the corridor, and you'll win. I don't think the Eurofighters are going anywhere. No. Anytime soon. I mean, Matthew does make it sound remarkably simple. He does. It's not that simple, but fear not, because. We'll just go to the wind tunnel again. We'll just go to the wind tunnel again. We'll just go to the actual places designed yeah. for it. <laughs> and we could we could actually put some spinaches in the wind tunnel and we could do that as a quick test. Um, and put squirrels in there as well. Yeah, they? last week, Connor uh, did Unbound. Yeah. Um, and we had the videos go up about it. And there was the Unbound uh, bike check he did about his um, bike that he used. And Johnny Loco 11, which was his really nice alchemy, um, said, as a roadie looking at this bike, I'm wondering how much is recoverable after this. <laughs> You know, how much would need to be... Did you see it? It was absolutely caked in mud. Yeah. Well, it just needs a blooming good wash and a little service. It's not like it's, nothing's actually worn out. It just needs a good bit of care and attention. Cool fact, Connor hasn't washed the bike still yet. It's still in the same condition. Is it? It hasn't, it hasn't touched it at all. Um, anyway, uh, Per Jensen, 1962, says... All of that, but no raincoat. Yeah, so he packed so much spare stuff and just didn't take a raincoat with him. So that's why he rode in a bin bag. Um, yeah. <laughs> why yeah. would you wear a bin bag? There were quite a few comments about the bin bag. Bin bag gate. Um, right. Yeah. Um, onto the bike vault is my favourite part of the show. You've got the bell. The bell is down here. So you submit pictures of your bikes in the GCN app where you can vote on other people's bikes and people can vote on yours. And But, but, but what really matters is our judgement here on the show. <laughs> yeah. If it's nice... Great. If it's super nice, Alex rings the bell. Oh, yeah. So. The most super nice from last week, as voted by everyone on the app. We're going to judge it, though. Ooh. It's from E. Fockund. Yes. Oh, it's obviously someone called Edward. 
because they've got custom graphics on the top tube. It says Special Ed. Oh. Like that. Edward Focken. Uh, yep. Edward Focken, I'm not sure where he lives, but where he lives, it's autumn. It's very autumnal. Yes. Um, go on. I th- not in the correct no. year. No, I'm going to say no. Jaunty angle. Yeah. The fact that it's not stra- it's a straight angle with respect to the garage door yeah. is triggering me a bit. And uh, also, it's not in Biggie Smalls. It's just a nice. It's a nice. Sorry, Ed. Um, too fat, too slow. I didn't know you changed your username. Mm. <laughs> Scott Addict RC. I, I really like these. Uh, where is it? Where's I've got to scroll bottom, down where's the bottom, bottom I've got to scroll there. down so far to get to the bike. One hell of a backdrop, though. Yeah. Where is that? Hang on. I'm just, I'm just checking. The, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, valves are aligned. It's in the correct gear. A few accessories on there. I'm struggling to find any genuine reason to not super nice that. Go on then. It's got, yeah, go on then. Jump at the opportunity. Um, Next up we've got, um, what bike is this actually? Well this is user ID. Author, null. <laughs> we'll put the username up. Kuwara Pacer, built in Japan from 1988. Two years Kuwara before I was born. Ranger. Wow. Um, this bike's not doing it for me. It doesn't have the wow cool factors. I think it's it. a really, really cool bike. I just think the the weird jaunty angle and like the shrubbery that it's been placed in is yeah, super kind of pra- not super not, practical bike though. Not optimal. I think it's a mega bike, but I just think it's not presented in the right way. Okay, um, just a nice. Next up is Island Rider 1985. Who's been riding around Vancouver Island? Oh yeah. TCR what TCR Pro One. Oh, what do we got? Oh, it's balanced up on this little ledge with just the pedal, which is slightly concerning me. That it could fall at any given moment. Yeah, not ideal. Valves are not aligned. It is in the correct gear, but the cranks are not aligned. Yeah, the chimney's offending me here. Lots of boats in the background. Yeah, it's very nice around there. There's like whales and dolphins and seals and everything. How do you know that? You get the ferry from Vancouver Island over to Nanaimo. It's great. <laughs> cool. Um, nice or super nice then? Um, I'm getting nice. Nice. Yeah, okay. Um, Maggie makes maps next. Maggie makes maps with a Trekamonda SL5. Great, clear, clear background. Yeah. Fresh coat of Ron Seal on there. Bit of paint well, added into the mix. Yeah. They look like they've jet washed that sort of concrete driveway as well. It's very clean. Okay. That's a super nice. That is definitely That's a, a super nice. It's a really nice off. paint job on the bike as well. I really like that. What's the little thing Sticker. on the... There's like a, a little bit in. of customization going on on the, all, on the head tube. It says all bodies on bikes. Well, that I like... That is a good slogan. I like it. It's 105 groups of the people. Yeah, I'm digging it. That's a great bike. That one. Yeah, That's boy. my favourite one this week. <laughs> Go do eggs. <laughs> With a Damani SL5 from 2023. They are at the Marine Museum of Manitoba, Selkirk, Inc. At the Visitor Information Centre. A lot of Canadians. Yeah. A lot of Canadians this week. Um, I like it. I like it. A bit of a busy background, but it is, and it's a bit underexposed with the sun behind it casting the shadow. Just turn your brightness up, that fixes oh. it. Oh, there you go. Go on, then. Yeah, all right. That one in. Oh. Um, that was it. Is it? Oh, right. Last one. Um, that's a shame. Quite, quite enjoyed that show this week. Yeah. I'm glad that we've invented a new type of bike. <laughs> well, you have anyway. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments section down below your thoughts on sportive bikes and sportives in general, actually. And, um, well, I'm off the Global Bike Festival. In fact, when this show goes out, I'll be at the Global Bike Festival. I'm going to Eurobike. That'd be cool, actually. Make in sure you get loads of cool stuff. In Frankfurt. Yeah? Mm. Oh. Going to see um, our friends from GCN Auf Deutsch. Have some German sausage. Mm. Mm. Lovely. See you later.